What's going on guys, this is Peter here and you are watching another Guild Wars 1 with the Eternal Groove today. This is the one most of you voted for, classic cursed drops like Echo Wild Shield, Guardian of the Hunt, Amber Weapons, Gothic Weapons, Holy Branches, Chris Daggers, Wicked Blades and much more uh, drops here. On one hand this chest run yields a very good chest to minute ratio. Probably one of the best choices for Treasure Hunter along with uh, Pong Mai Valley. 4 or 5 chests each time and sub 5 minute runs. On the other hand, this area in hard mode is a bit difficult to survive. Uh, most of the mobs here have either enchantment removal or stance removal, knockdowns, interrupts, especially the wardens can be a problem in big numbers. So this is not a beginner friendly place. And I would say perma spell prevention is recommended and maybe some boost to activate the overall stability's anti knockdown ability. This time my dervish has a uh, vow of silence because this skill is more energy friendly than shadow form plus deadly paradox. And the farm starts from uh, Vazburg armory and we pretty much cover the whole map. So after the usual reason trick you can start the run with uh, talking to the Kurzik or the L Luxon priest. And as the border changes, sometimes the priest is Kurzik, sometimes he's Luxon. But in both cases, you may get their blessing for the bonus HP and uh, the plus 3 HP regen. This is only optional, but it's cheap, only 100 or 150 gold, and, and it lasts for the whole run. If you happen to maintain Vow of Piety during the run, you may have Perma 6 HP regen and plus 24 armor. Okay, now leave the priest and keep right. Avoid these first groups and run straight to the triple boss point. Many times you will find a chest here, either at the Ritu boss on the left or at the Mesmer boss in the center or at the Monk boss on the right. Sometimes even two chests in this crossroad area. And try to keep up Vow of Silence while being close to the enemy groups. And always use Iron Man Step Away or some alcohol to, to prevent knockdowns. The Warden of the Trees have uh, knockdown skills but they only use it when you are very close to them. So even if your anti knockdown skills are, are recharging, you have a chance to simply run past the warriors without getting knocked to, to the ground. Check the group on the left and on the right, and if there is no additional chest, leave this spot quickly. Stone scale curing groups come now, they seem like running away, but the second group always comes back. The undergrowth have a wide blow, uh, this is the reason why I have two stances in my build. Dash is useful to break aggro in case uh, the warriors removed uh, pious haste uh, when you open the chest or something like this. And then always check the path they are heading to, rarely a chest may spawn somewhere on the right. Advice to reuse Shroud of Distress and Warven stability before this big pack and try to avoid the warriors. The spirit of this enchantment can remove enchants easily. This happens sometimes, you can't really avoid that, but it only hurts when you have to stand still for a long time. And after this assassin boss we arrive in the worst part of the area. I would say from this point on you will need spell prevention 24-7 or you will get hexed, your enchantment removed, even spiked with e-surge. Uh, you know the warden of the spirits don't mess around, they are OP mesmers after all and they can kill you easily. Always check this pit area on the left, this is a frequent chest location as well. And these Mantis guys and the Wardens are enemies by the way, they always fight each other. And I would say the Mantis are not as deadly as the Wardens are, but still they can hex you with crippling anguish or snare you with some crippled conditions, so don't underestimate them either. Okay, we can leave the pit now and go deep into the Warden territory. This is the hardest part of the whole run by far. If you forget Shroud or VOS, you will probably not make it to the Ritu boss. And in case a big group is ahead, rather wait for skills to recharge and only aggro when you have full defense again.
after the plan 32 boss turn back and check this spot on the left hand side and finish the circle like I do. In this run I've got 5 lock chests, even got the guardian of the hunt, so it was a decent run. Uh, you can type slash resign and you can do the same again and again till your fingers start hurting or your no nose bleeding. I know I'm just joking guys, don't overdo it. But if you are wondering about what drops you may get if you open 1000 chests here, I can show you some of my data. Uh, I've got some holy branches with 20% half costing times, um, some coaster modded or 15 slash 50 martial weapons. I got a perfect amber longbow, but nothing too valuable. This is how chest running works, I guess, ups and downs like a roller coaster. This time I wasn't that lucky. Um, by the way, good news, compared to Pong My Valley, uh, I've got much more Echoval Shields and Guardians of the Hunt. So if you fancy these skins and you want a nice old school version of them, Eternal Grove is a great place for them. And finally, the drop list. Stop the video here if you want to see them one by one. Also, summarize table, you see the main problem here, at least the problem for most chest runners, I believe, is the high number of Warden Armor pieces. I mean, you can get superior vigors or other runes from them, but still they decrease the chance for other OS skins, like Echo Wilds, for instance, and this is the reason people dislike them. Anyway, this was my Eternal Guru chest run. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned because more vids will come.